one of the most important things to cultivating a good life is to cultivating a positive attitude towards failure. Failure is going to happen. And then the question is, what do you do when you fail? Do you use it as an opportunity to learn, to grow, to figure out what didn't work, what can work, what should work, how to make it work next time, to figure out what you're good at, what you're not good at, to introspect, and therefore next time to do it better, or to decide on a different path because the particular path you're on is not a good path. You failed at it. And you failed at it maybe not because your own fault, maybe because it's not achievable. Who knows? There are lots of reasons for failure. And we can do another show on failure sometime. But if you convince yourself or if you're convinced that failure is a disaster, you cannot recover from failure, and failure what life is about, then you will you cannot achieve happiness. And in that sense, optimism is important. Having a positive perspective on life, having a benevolent view of the universe, having a view that values are achievable, that you, the things that are in your control, you can achieve, you can succeed, you can attain your values. Well, one way to attain this optim, this kind of positive view, this optimism, is to seek out great experiences, to seek out exaltation, to seek out success models, role models, heroes, to see and to focus on and to celebrate success and achievement and greatness when you see it around you. There are a variety of different ways in which you can do this. And this is what I mean. Pursue the exalted. Pursue greatness. Pursue hero, hero, the, the heroic. Now, exaltation in and of itself is... Let me see. I've got some dictionary definitions. The state of being exalted. Well, that doesn't help. An excessively intensified sense of well-being power or importance. This is Miriam Webster, right? Oops. Uh, an increase in a degree of intensity, feeling of joy and exaltation, right? So seek opportunities to feel great joy, great pleasure, great satisfaction in your life but one of the ways to do that is to see it elsewhere to see greatness outside of you to experience greatness to experience greatness and again there are a number of avenues in life where you can find this let's go through a few of them for example, art. Art is a place where you can experience that exaltation, that, it, 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 that achievement is possible, that success is possible, the, the, the joy and the pleasure of seeing something magnificent. The, the feeling that some of us have when we first, maybe even the 300th time, we see Michelangelo's David in the Academia in Florence. Or when you hear and immerse yourself in Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, or I just came from a concert actually, just came from a concert of uh, Brahms uh, Violin Concerto. It's so beautiful. And it, particularly in the third movement, it is so joyous. It is such an expression of exaltation of pure joy, of enjoyment of life, of the potential of life. Just immersing yourself in that beautiful flow of music, of energy, of positive positivism, 
of a positive view of the world. So one of the reasons to surround yourself with art, one of the reasons to go out of your way to find art that gives you that feeling is to reinforce this idea that joy and happiness and success are possible. Possible in you because you're experiencing, possible in what the artist is manifesting in front of you, possible in their own achievement, that greatness is possible. They achieved it. You're experiencing it. Art is the fuel of life. Too many, too many people in our culture, I'd say overwhelming majority of the people in our culture, 90 plus percent of the people in our culture, have no appreciation for the power that art can have on their lives. Do not internalize it. Do not open themselves up to the experience. Do not embrace it. Do not even try. Most of them are cynical towards art or ignorant about art. And they have no, they just have no conception. They have no clue. They have no idea of how to relate to it. And I think this is true as true of objectivists as of the world around us, as of the culture around us. We are poor. We are poor. We're rich materially. We're rich philosophically. But we generally are poor when it comes to our experiences of aesthetics. So one way in which you can raise the level of positivism in your life, of this benevolence and this optimism, is by letting yourself, immersing yourself, letting yourself experience greatness in art, allowing you yourself to respond, to respond fully, emotionally, to great art. And, and, and really, those of you who don't do this yet are missing out. You're missing out on an important part of life. You're missing out on a tool, an important tool to achieving happiness, to improving your own life, to fueling and providing yourself with energy, to increasing your optimism, optimism in the sense that we talked about in the um, previous Rules for Life. <clears throat> so, um, art is one way in which uh, this... Um, you know, uh, experiencing exaltation uh, 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 and, and conv starting to convince yourself in some way, implicitly, convince yourself, gaining the confidence in the ability to be successful in the world. Another is finding heroes. Um, of course, art is one way in which you do that. I mean, how many of us often use um, Reardon or Roark or uh, these are characters from Ayn Rand's books, Ayn Rand's novels, or Dagny as models, as inspiration in our own lives. We've got models of what is possible for human beings, what life can be like. Fontenay, that shrugged. And that fuels us, it inspires us, but it also creates certain mental models for what is possible. It encourages us to be more ambitious about our own life, about our own careers, about our own success, about our romantic relationships. So finding heroes in art, and we'll talk about real life in a minute, is crucial. Again, if we go back to Michelangelo's David, what is part of the experience you get when seeing it? It's this confidence. I mean, here's a young kid. 
standing up to Goliath. And you can see in the way he stands, in the way he looks, in the way he holds his hands, in the way he holds his body, the certainty, the confidence, the heroism involved. It's not limited to David. It's what is possible to man. Is what is possible to man what is possible to you? But heroes do not only have to be limited to art. They can be real life. They can be historical figures that you admire and respect. They can be current figures that do amazing things that you admire and respect. And here, I think it's important to learn how to worship hero worship, how to admire the heroic in somebody while recognizing that many people are also flawed, that many people are mixed, that a few people are 100% heroic, particularly in the world in which we live, of such mixtures. You can look at a businessman who is very mixed, I don't know, Steve Jobs, who does stupid things that ultimately lead to his death, like, you know, go on a juice diet when he has cancer. And you can abstract away from all that, abstract away from all the silliness and the stupidity and the unheroic stuff, and focus on the achievement. Focus on what is worthy of your admiration. Focus on what is worthy of emulation, focus it was on, on the achievement. And again, the achievement should give you that sense again of what is possible, of the fact that achievement is possible. And here's a living example of it. And at whatever scale these people achieve, at whatever scale you can achieve, you can emulate them. Maybe not by changing the world as Steve Jobs did, but by changing whatever piece of the world you have the capacity to change. So it doesn't mean you have to be a productive genius like they do. But by seeing somebody exhibit the ability to be as productive, as focused, as creative, as single-minded, again, focused, somebody like Steve Jobs was, was, should inspire you to be able to apply that to your life, to whatever it is you're doing. So look for people who are really, really, really good at what they do. You don't have to admire every aspect of, your life, of their life, and you don't have to make them into John Galt. Admire the things about them that are worth admiring. And embrace that, celebrate that, internalize that. Use that to fuel you. Use that to inspire yourself. Use that to make you a better person. Nicholas, thank you. I appreciate the support. Ryan, thank you. Appreciate it. So, at every opportunity, seek out the achievers. Seek out successful people. Try to figure out what makes it possible for them to achieve. Try to figure out their secrets of success. Read biographies of great people. And again, ignore, for the purposes of this exercise, ignore the imperfections. Ignore you know, particularly in the culture today where, where people relish in the weaknesses, they relish in the flaws, they love to bring those out. We should not. We should relish the success, relish the achievement, relish the things that they do that is good, that are good, that's good. We should be the opposite of the cynical culture and say, yeah, okay, so he did this other stuff, eh, for me, that's insignificant because what I'm focused on 
And it's not like I'm going to give him some kind of award or something. It's just in your mind. What I'm focused on is on the greatness because that's how I generate fuel. That's how I focus my, help focus my life. That's how I can inspire myself. So look for great art that inspires. There's great art that doesn't inspire. Dostoevsky doesn't inspire. But look for great art that inspires for this purpose. Look for heroes in art that inspires. Then look for heroes in real life that can inspire you. And focus in on the good in them. Focus in on the heroic in them. Focus in on what you can use to inspire yourself. And again, none of this is something that anybody's going to teach you in the culture out there. None of this is something that the culture embraces. None of this is something that the culture cares about. The culture cares about ripping people down. The culture cares about bad news. The culture cares about failure. The culture cares about ugliness. The culture cares about, doesn't care about art at all. Look at the movies, look at much of the, 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 the art, if you can, to the extent that we can call it art, the TV shows, they're, they're about negativity, they're about man's flaws, the best TV shows are the ones about the horrors of the world. Not about the heroes. Not about inspiration. About shredding, tearing stuff down. All right. And, you know, the third thing I would say is look for the good inside of you. Celebrate the good in you. Celebrate the successful in you. Appreciate that. When you do something well, when you achieve something, pat yourself on the back. When you achieve something, recognize it and celebrate it. Don't just go on to the next thing. Take a moment. Absorb what you've done. Pat yourself on the back. Think about the work, the effort, the focus, the energy, sometimes the pain that went into the achievement. Internalize that. And say to yourself, good job. Well done. It's so crucial. Because otherwise, that's how you integrate achievement. And that's how you ultimately integrate the self-esteem. I am worthy. I can achieve. I can be successful because, look, I just did. I just succeeded. And you make that a mental habit of constantly reflecting on the good in you. Now, you know, you need to focus and reflect on, the, on, the, on, the, on your weaknesses and to improve them and to make them better and so on. But, you know, there's tons of people who talk about that and recommend that. But this idea, in a sense of pride, of being proud of yourself, of thinking and integrating what's good about you. Nobody talks about that. That's pride, that's selfishness, that's no good. But to do that, I'll go to a theme that kind of is covered through all the rules of life. You've got to take risks. You've got to push the envelope. You've got to achieve. You've got to do things. It, things won't just happen to you. And if you're just, you know, achieving within a very narrow scope or you're never really trying or you're never really pushing yourself or you're never going outside of your narrow band, 
then the celebration, the achievement, the integration is never going to be complete. Because you're always going to know, yeah, but it, I didn't really try that hard. Yeah, I didn't really push myself. Yeah, it, ultimately, that was easy. Do hard stuff. Try hard stuff. And you'll fail. Again, failure is a major part of life. You'll fail. You'll screw up. You'll fall flat on your face. I mean, one of the reasons Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley. One of the reasons for the success of Silicon Valley in Israel has a very similar attitude is that they don't mind failing. They don't penalize failure. They don't, uh, you know, in Europe, when you fail in a business, you're done. You're never going to raise money again. You're a failure. That's it. You failed. In the U.S., so you failed, all right? But you tried. The important thing is you tried. And hey, if you try again, let us know. We might fund you again. Come, up, come back with a better idea. Tell us what you learned from the past failure. Is it applicable to anything in the future? It's, you've got to take risks in life. You've got to push the envelope in life. You've got to put yourself out there in life in order to be able to gain that self-esteem, that self-confidence, and that exaltation, that true satisfaction of, I've really achieved something. If it's easy, then how big of an achievement is it? So, find hard stuff to do. Don't settle. So many people settle. So many people out there just settle for an average, normal, mediocre, non-exalted life. But you want to really feel. You want to really push. So art, heroes, and you. Find the heroic. Find achievement in all those realms. Celebrate the heroic, celebrate achievement in all those realms. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.